G'day, so welcome to some of the new subscribers I've uh, come across from Skillcoat and uh, this is going to be part of a series where I'm going to teach uh, the fundamentals of axemanship and hopefully go from extremely basic to very advanced, almost competition level. Um, anyway, so selecting your axe. Now this is a very important thing because if you choose the wrong axe to begin with, you're going to have a harder time um, learning and also, uh, you know, it's going to be a waste of money. Now, I'm going to share my experience of what makes an ideal axe and uh, this is based off my own experience but also um, Morse Kahansky and uh, Dudley Cook as well as a Skill Cult. Um, so these are some of the things I've learned. What to avoid? Extremely light axes. This is a typical Scandinavian forest axe or Swedish forest axe or whatever the company decides to call them in 65 centimeters and a one and three quarter pound head. Far too light. This won't tire you out, but it's a uh, very inefficient. Um, you know. It, it, it doesn't do much work and the, the bit's very short so it's hard to overlap cuts so with this um, you also have to accelerate it very very fast in order to get uh, any sort of power out of it which for a beginner I've noticed um, the, the confidence isn't there to swing an axe that fast so you need a bit more weight if you have a bit more weight then you don't have to swing it as fast to get work done Double bits. Now, these are especially not good for a beginner. Two edges increases the danger and uh, in my next video I'm going to do bucking and I'm going to show how to swing an axe and uh, it will become apparent very quickly that this kind of axe with two edges is not good for bucking and that's basically 90% of the core wood challenge. I teach a swinging the axe in a timber sport style where you're bringing the axe um, directly in front of your nose and keeping it keeping it there for the entire swing. Um, some people tend to swing over the shoulder and that's not much of a problem with a double bit but uh, the point is, is I don't think it's a great idea to bring an edge so close to your face and uh, you know it's asking for trouble especially with a beginner. The other thing is, is long handles in general, so even single bits with a 36 inch handle are very awkward to use, they're more tiring, they magnify any errors in your accuracy and um, you can't utilise any uh, acceleration from your like bending your legs or uh, bringing your shoulders down. Um, again that will become apparent in my next video. So avoid 36 inch handles and especially avoid double bits. Now the ideal is a 70 centimeter handle so fits under your armpit quite nicely. Uh, so basically the length of your arm and uh, you want about uh, two and a half to three pound head. You can go a little bit, a little bit heavier than that but uh, that's the best weight for endurance. You're going to be wanting to work for you know a couple of hours at a time at least. Um, some people like to shop for only an hour in the Cordwood Challenge but uh, I think it's best if you do it for a couple of hours you'll get the most uh, improvement. Now this kind of weight of two and a half to three pounds gives you you know an optimal balance and uh, I think it's an ideal for beginners. Another thing is uh, you want a slightly wider bit than the Scandinavian axe. Uh, this means it's easier to overlap your cut and remove the chips. So um, the ideal weight of axe is a bit difficult to find these days because you either find small bush craft axes or really big heavy or you know felling or splitting axes and uh, companies tend not to make them. But uh, if you're in Europe you can find um, great axes from Oxenkopf. Uh, they have several axes in this sort of weight range and size. Um, I personally recommend the Oxenkopf Eitlis, uh, either the 1 kilo or 1.2 kilo. Um, 
I think this is an ideal weight. This is their Universal Axe. Um, I've got their Outlist Double Bit, and it's a extremely good and um, free in the woods axe. It doesn't stick too much, but it has very good bite. So if you choose one of the single bit Outlist, op outlist axes, uh, I don't think you'll be disappointed. Again, if you're in Europe, this is probably my favourite, is the Holter Falls, uh, it's sort of like the budget line. They make an excellent axe, um, great steel on it, it holds a, a good edge. It's got slightly convex cheeks, which means it's very free in the wood. And um, again, they've got the right handle lengths. This is a 32 with a 3.5 pound, but they make a 1.2 kilo with like a 70, 75 centimetre handle, so absolutely ideal. So. You know, I think these are the gold standard as far as uh, acts for the Cordwood Challenge. But uh, from what I hear, unavailable in the US. Now, if you're in America, um, the Council Tour Boys Axe is quite a popular choice. Um, partly because it's a, it's a good size and partly because it's the only thing available out there um, from what I hear anyway. It's a little bit on the light side though. Just a little bit, but it's I'd say it's a reasonable axe for the Corwood Challenge. One of the nice things is the handle's probably the best out there. Um, I mean, it could do a little bit of fitting, but from the box, it's um, leaps and bounds ahead of m most of the stuff out there. So this wouldn't be a bad choice at all. However, um, I think... Perhaps an alternative to that is the Rinaldi Axis. Now, this is the Calabria um, Heavy Duty, it's called, on Baronix Knife. It's a £3 head. And uh, with stock, it comes with a 34-inch handle. Now, the nice thing is with these style of handles is you can cut them down shorter. And uh, you could have a bit of experimentation with what suits you. You can slip fit the handle on... Um, so it's not wedged, which means you can change the handle in seconds. So if you want to buy one axe and then make a couple of handles for it, that'd be a, quite a good idea because you can have a shorter handle for limbing and uh, other tasks. And, uh, you know, it's a good all round axe. It's got a good profile, great grind. Um, I think a very good uh, budget axe at $80. And uh, yeah. Maybe worth looking into. Now, other tools that are absolutely essential you're going to need are uh, rasps. Uh, most axes come with very, very thick handles, and you're going to need to thin them down before doing the cordwood challenge. I made the mistake of going out the first time uh, when I done it and using a stock handle. This is a stock oxen cop handle, and you can see how much I thinned it down um, for this axe. It's uh, almost half the thickness. Doing this will be absolutely essential, especially if you're cutting for a couple of hours. Um, I cut for three hours the first day I done the cut challenge, and uh, came home with very very sore hands after that, and it took me quite a while to recover. So. Ideally, I'd get a rasp with a, a curved side and a, a flat, and that's great for working around the palm swell and those sort of areas. But uh, for heavy stock removal, the Japanese uh, Shinto rasps are fantastic. Um, it has a coarse side and a fine side in it. These are fairly good finish. Um, you can sand, but uh, very, very quick at removing stock, and it doesn't uh, get clogged up like some other rasps. You're also going to need to do quite a lot of heavy reprofiling on your axes, so files are essential. Um, I'm not sure what's good out in America, but uh, here in Europe, the Velob Swiss files are fantastic. I recommend going for at least a bastard and a smooth file. Um, the bastard file removes a lot of steel very quickly, and the smoother file can actually be very handy for sharpening and uh, it'll leave a good finish. But uh, also, a second cut file is quite handy as well, but uh, these are absolutely fantastic. These will cut the hardest uh, racing axe steel. 
So, well worth the money. Now, there's a lot of emphasis on expensive sharpening stones and things of that nature in the knife community, but uh, for an axe you really don't need it. Um, I generally don't go above a thousand grit when I'm sharpening, and that's absolutely maximum. Most of the time I don't bother going past a smooth cut file. Now, the ideal stone, I think, and uh, this is something Skill Cult taught me, um, is one of these Japanese water stones, and if you cut the end off, you uh, end up with a stone that's still good for sharpening knives and an uh, uh, axe puck, or you can make three of these axe pucks from one stone. I've found this to be absolutely excellent, and uh, nothing else out there compares that I've used to this axe puck. Really, really fantastic. Cuts the steel quickly and leaves a great finish. And uh, you know, these uh, stones you can buy them for like uh, 20 pounds or so. So, for three axe pucks, you know, you get uh, call it like seven pounds each. So, very affordable and uh, highly recommended. Anyway, I hope that gives you an idea of what to look for and uh, what to avoid and what sort of uh, modifications you're going to need to do to your axe. Um, you know, you can use whatever axe you want in this challenge, of course, and uh, experiment around, but um, this is my recommendations and it'll make the challenge a lot easier. Anyway, I hope you found this video informative and uh, the next video will be uh, me teaching you how to buck a log um, efficiently and uh, especially working on your form to improve accuracy. Uh, there's, you know, you can swing an axe any way you want, but there is a sort of uh, better way, I'll say. Thank you for watching and uh, see you in the next video.